हेलो डियर नीट एस्पिरेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल होप यू आर डूइंग गुड यस सो वी आर बैक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक दैट इज कॉकरोच सो टूडे टॉपिक इज टू स्टडी अबाउट कॉकरोचेस यस यू मे थिंक वाई वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉकरोचेस वाई वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट दैम बिकॉज वॉस पॉइंट इट इज देयर इन द नीट सिलेबस Yes. Now, engineering students may ask, why we should study cockroaches? Correct. If you will just scroll down and search on the net, you will find that these animals have been engineered for some purposes. They have been put some chips on that as a cyborg. In Singapore, team also has some done some you know research on that, and they have put some chips on their body. and made them to go into the areas where the humans can't reach easily so there you have to apply one more thing in biomechanics which is there a subject in indian institute of science they keep on asking those questions from in kvpy also so be focused you have to study these things you know how the mechanism of flight developed in insects biomechanics is involved in that so better be focused Okay, let's start. It's an interesting lecture, so let's start now with topic that is cockroach. So NCERT says cockroaches. It does not only specify one species that is Periplanata americana. No, it does not talk only about Periplanata americana. It talks about cockroaches in general. Please remember that. So let's see what do you mean by that. How? how that can make a difference here first you tell me have you seen cockroaches can you differentiate between these cockroaches if i say identify a b c and d which of the following is the periplanata americana is it a b c or d it's not easy for you to identify i can understand it requires little bit of experience to understand which species that so let's see here the a is your australian cockroach is your australian cockroach here are you able to understand what i'm saying this a species is your australian cockroach b species b is your german cockroach now don't think that these are not found in india they are also found in india german cockroach is found in india i'm not sure about australian cockroach but german cockroach is definitely there now comes the c the most common cockroach found in your home that is periplanata americana this is the one periplanata americana that is your american cockroach we say but don't think that is found in america it is most common cockroach in india and the one that is blata orientalis that is oriental cockroach is the d1 that was the native of india but now who has overtaken that that is the periplanata americana so for survival you need to be very strong and better suited to overcome other species and this species has done that cockroaches are also important as they are very very successful organisms on earth in du during evolution they have evolved long back some 200 million years ago they were existing and still they are present so in a way we can say them as living fossils also they are very well adapted to the you know different kind of situations even if atomic warfare happens they are going to survive we humans may not survive but these are going to survive they can tolerate radiation much more than humans okay anyway let's talk about the text now here you see cockroaches are nocturnal nocturnal means they are more active during night time you see in the kitchen also in the night time they will keep on moving here and there they are omnivores now one very important question i may ask you are cockroaches omnivores or scavengers please write down in the chat box 
and let's have a discussion why we can't consider cockroaches as scavengers that's a question why we say them only omnivores why not scavengers right on the chat box let's discuss those color usually you see they are brown or black usually they are brown or black but bright yellow red and green cockroaches have also been discovered you know identified in some tropical regions so that means they are still existing you know you can somewhere find those bright yellow red or green cockroaches also the size now here comes very important point so when i say size ranges from here the size of cockroaches ranges from 1 by 4 inches to 3 inches so that means i am talking about all types of cockroaches not periplanata americana even ncert is very smart in writing this most of the you know students they can't understand what ncert is trying to say ncert has clearly told that cockroaches size ranges from 1 by 4 inch to 3 inches that is 0.6 cm to 7.6 cm their range can be there but specifically in the next paragraph ncert writes that periplanata americana adult size is 34 to 53 mm so be very specific what ncert writes please read it very properly in few instances only they have talked about periplanata americana and wherever they have talked about they have written periplanata americana adult size is this they have mentioned that periplanata americana molds 13 times so these are very very important point let's discuss all those things also let's continue further now so you understood the basic all types of cockroaches we talked about they are cosmopolitan and they are found almost everywhere you know that let's talk about the periplanata americana this is the one species which we were talking about and ncert has clearly written the adults of periplanata americana are about 34 to 53 mm long and in periplanata americana only if you want to differentiate between the male and female so male is going to have the wings which are longer and they are going to extend beyond the abdomen you can see here beyond the abdomen in males so the length of the wings will be beyond the abdomen in males in case of a species that is periplanata americana hope you understood very clearly classification the systemic position of periplanata americana we are going to talk about the phylum which it belongs is arthropoda as you can see they have jointed appendages so because of jointed appendages they are classified under arthropoda arthros poda poda means appendages they are identified in a class so this is a phylum and this is a class class is insecta why we put cockroach under insecta why we don't put it under crustaceans or arachnids reason is there because it contains three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings so this is the characteristic of the insects so this is the characteristics of insects three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings that is why insecta is called hexapoda because it has three pairs of legs means six legs so hexapoda genus is periplanata and the species we are talking about is americana in this case only not overall in general we are not talking about periplanata americana we are talking about here only so you understood this about the general description of periplanata americana if you want to know about the order also order of periplanata americana which is usually not asked but still you should know it that is diptyotera or you can also say it is orthoptera why it is called orthoptera or diptyotera why it is grouped under diptyotera or orthoptera because it has two pairs of wings which are not equal one is mesothoracic wing one is metathoracic wing so they are not equal and their function one is uh, 
metathoracic wings only help in flight so that also we'll be talking about and family also we should not talk about because that's not that much important here now the body of cockroach is divided into head thorax and abdomen these are also called as tagmata the divisions are called tagmata tagmata means the three divisions the three divisions or the segments in which you have classified that is head thorax and abdomen so these are the tagmata you can see here this is the head part this is the thorax region and this is the abdomen remember very important point abdomen in insects is always abdomen in insects is always appendage less what do you mean by that appendage less that means they don't have any appendages coming out of the abdomen abdomen is appendage less please remember this very important point in insects abdomen will not have any appendage coming out now segments total segments of body in segments of body you have in the embryonic region in the embryonic region you have almost 20 segments in cockroach and in the adult you have only 14 segments let's see how in the embryonic region the head had six segments here six segments adult has only one segment in the embryonic region the thorax in adult and the embryo both have three segments here also three segments here also so in the adult and embryo thorax had three segments only let's talk about the abdomen so abdomen in case of embryo had 11 segments but in adults it has only 10 so total you can see here is total in embryonic segments are 20 in cockroach but in adult it has only 14 segments is it clear with you so these are the comparison between the embryonic segments and the adult segments in the entire body now we will be talking about the sclerites that is chitinous exoskeleton which is in the form of sclerites on the entire body of cockroach so the entire body of the cockroach is covered by sclerites these sclerites are made up of chitin these are chitinous what do you mean by chitinous? Chitinous means they are made up of chitin. Made up of chitin. What is chitin? Chitin is a homopolysaccharide. Chitin is homopolysaccharide. Homopolysaccharide. What do you mean by that? This thing you are going to study in the biomolecules chapter also. Homopolysaccharide means they have only one type of monomer attached with them. So it's a monomer of monomer of NAG. What is NAG? That is N acetyl glucosamine. N acetyl glucosamine is the component. Like there's a glucose. So if you keep on adding glucose and glucose in a particular manner, so you may form cellulose or a starch or glycogen. But here the component is NAG, N acetyl glucosamine, which is forming a homopolymer called chitin. Is it okay with you now? So, this chitin is very important because it is forming a protective covering over it. Now, these slurides can be of three types. Now, these slurides can be of three types here, you see. These slurides, for example, if they are present on the dorsal region, if they are present on the dorsal region, they are called as tergites or the tergum. When they are present on the ventral side, they are called as sternum or sternite. And when they are present on the lateral side, they are called as pleurite. I'll show you how. Let's see here. Suppose this is the, this is the structure here. 
of the cockroach cockroach body part is there here some abdominal part is there and here you see on this there is a cover of chitinous exoskeleton and this chitinous exoskeleton which is covering on the dorsal side that is called as tergum so tergum is what on the dorsal side when you have those coverings on the ventral side those covering of the chitinous exoskeleton on the ventral side they are called sternum or sternites and when you have those coverings on the lateral sides they are called as pleurites or pleuron that is pleuron or pleurites okay so is it clear with you now that's very easy now one last important point now these lerites these lerites are held together by a structure here which is called as arthroidal membrane arthroidal membrane is holding these lerites so this is the lerites which are being held by what arthroidal membranes arthroidal membrane is also called as articular membrane please remember this point important so articular membrane or the arthroidal membrane is the structure which connects those which holds those two sclerites because if you want to move now so you should have they should not go away the segment should not go away from each other so they are held together by what arthroidal membrane or articular membrane hope you understood this let's continue with the head region the three parts we talked about was head thorax and abdomen so let's talk about the head one the triangular head the cockroach has a triangular head and it is formed by the fusion of six segments six embryonic segments six embryonic segments have fused to form one head so one head has been formed by six embryonic segments being fused now let's see this head shows little bit mobility also and it is because of a structure which is attached with it that is called as neck so it has a very flexible neck which is also called as cervicum which is also called as cervicum so this cervicum or the neck is holding the prothorax and the head hope you understand now let's let me explain you here so this is the head of the cockroach and here is the neck region and here comes your body this is the body part so this head of the cockroach head is hypogonathus why we call hypogonathus let's see if you see this is the body and from the body the head is 90 degree at an angle 90 degree it is just you know held down so this because of this reason the head is called as hypogonathus so why the head is called hypogonathus because it is just at the 90 degree angle to the parallel orientation of body understood the body is here and you can see the head is towards the down side so gnatha means jaws so all the structure of the you know cockroach has gone down so that is why it is hypo hypo means down lower side gnatha means jaws so the, all those structures have gone down so that's why it's called hypogonathus very important part point here head has endoskeleton also head has endoskeleton endoskeleton of head is called tentorium is called tentorium please write down this important point so there is a endoskeleton also in the head region which is called as tentorium is it okay with you let's move now little bit further deliberately these you know blanks have been left and that is you are going to answer them because this is the way the questions come in neat exam so suppose i write a here now again a is here and b is written here so if you don't practice like this you may have some trouble in writing those you know questions when the final exam comes 
so keep on practicing these type of questions each and every diagrammatic question should be practiced so let's see a is your mandible a is your mandible here you can see here a is mandible mandible is used for you know crushing those uh, food okay next is your b that is your maxillae b is your maxillae please remember and here is a labrum labrum is the upper lip labium is a lower lip we will talk about these mouth parts also but before that just talk about this head head is a triangular in position and as such this diagram comes in your exam also here you can see one pair of compound eye is here one this side and one that side also so one pair of compound eye is present in head even one pair of simple eye also you can see ocellus ocellus is simple eye the simple eye it is also called fenestra okay it is also called as fenestra so simple eye also one pair it doesn't has uh, the function is not much known but it is still it can you know it seems it can uh, have some effect the light can have some effect on that also they can have some they they have some little bit photoreceptors which can tell them about the condition of light but the main eye which helps them to have some image processing is the compound eye so compound eye is for image processing in case of cockroach and one compound eye is made up of very small units that is omatidia each compound eye is made up of 2000 omatidia that also we'll talk about in nervous system don't worry this is the antennae can you see this is the antennae here this antennae is called as piliform antennae different types of antennae are present in insects so this type of antennae which is present in cockroach is piliform antennae and this has three parts here you see antennae of cockroach has three parts so what are the three parts let's see the base part is the scape the basal part is your scape here just a minute the basal part is the scape let's see this one is your scape and just above the scape you have one pedicel these are parts of the these are the part of the antennae and here you can see this one this is the filament now one question is there you tell that this antennae is segmented or non segmented it is many segments are coming from the antennae so antennae you remember is many segmented please write down somewhere antennae is many segmented antennae is many segmented please write down it has many segments very important point for example they may ask you anal sarca is segmented or not anal style is segmented or not uh, this antennae is segmented or not all these questions usually come so be prepared for any type of question let's continue further with the mouth parts now before that a kind of little bit of you know head has been shown in a much elaborative way which is not there in your exams so you don't have to worry about just you have to listen few points only okay don't worry about that it's not in the course or something let's see here the largest laryte of the head is rons can you see this is the head which is a triangular in shape these are the compound eyes you can see here these are compound eyes okay these are compound eyes this is a compound eye here and you can see the simple eye also these are simple eye called ocellar spot or fenestra just now we talked about largest laryte of the head is rons but the largest laryte of the body is the pronotum please remember those points and here is your clypeus by which the mandibles are attached so mandibles are attached with which laryte clypeus let's talk about it so once you remember frons frons is 
लार्जेस्ट प्लेराइट ऑफ हेड बट प्रोनोटम प्रोनोटम विच इज द प्लेराइट ओवर द प्रोथोरैक्स दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द लार्जेस्ट प्लेराइट इन द बॉडी प्लीज रिमेंबर दीज टू पॉइंट लार्जेस्ट प्लेराइट ऑफ बॉडी ओके लेट सी नाउ रेस स्ट्रक्चर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी लेबियल पैल्प लेबियम मैगजरी पैल्प एंड जीना ऑल्सो यू कैन सी सो टोटल स्टरनाइट ऑन द हेड आर एट टोटल टर्नाइट और यू कैन से टोटल स्लेराइड बेटर टोटल स्लेराइड यू कैन से इट्स मच बेटर आई थिंक टोटल स्लेराइट ऑन हेड दीज आर एट इन नंबर ओके सो टोटल स्लेराइड ऑन द हेड आर एट इन नंबर सो एट स्लेराइड आर कवरिंग दैट हेड हेयर यू कैन सी ऑल्सो वर्टेक्स ऑक्सीपट ऑल दीज रीजन यू कैन सी दिज अमदा शेप स्ट्रक्चर यू कैन सी हेयर ओके सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द माउथ पार्ट नाउ वन बाय वन वील टेक आउट द माउथ पार्ट एंड स्टडी दैम इन लेबोरेटरी यू टू टेक आउट दीज पार्ट these are the mouth parts you see so let's talk about each and every mouth part here this is the labrum now labrum is the upper lip this is the upper lip very important this has some sensory apparatus here it is meant for taste it can just have some sensation of taste also so it is sensory mandible you see some things are left here deliberately these a and b are left blank again you have to tell what is a here in a mandible and what is b in mandible so you have to tell me so this is the mandible you see this is the mandible structure okay and you can see some structure like this so this part of the mandible which is a is your grinding region this is for grinding region and this one which we have talked about as b is for incising this is incising region that means when the food is there it will first cut this and the grinding has to be done by the a region mandibles are very important for cutting the cutting and grinding the food next comes your hypopharynx hypopharynx is a tongue you can see here hypopharynx is a small tongue so this is also called as tongue one more name has been given to it that is called lingula it is also called as lingula okay tongue is also called as lingula now don't get confused between lingula and ligula 90% of the students will not be able to answer almost 99% maybe what is the difference between lingula and ligula if you answer that in the chat box we can have a discussion in the next class or i can give you some hint also if you want you find the lingula okay lingula in the hypopharynx lingula you will find in the hypopharynx but ligula you find in the labium so here is ligula somewhere present hint i can give you ligula ligula is found in the ligula is a part of part of labium now can you see very interesting thing this is one maxilla this is also one maxilla here can you see these two maxillae they are these are first pair of maxillae so first pair of maxillae this is the first pair of maxillae both of them they form a pair so these two are first pair of maxillae labium actually was second pair of maxillae which has got fused now so labium is fused second pair of maxilla here let's see here labium which is also called as lower lip 
लोअर लिप इट इज प्यूज सेकेंड फेयर ऑफ मैगजिले सेकेंड फेयर ऑफ मैगजिले हैज फ्यूज एंड फॉर्म द लेबियम दैट इज लोअर लिप इज इट ओके विद यू नाउ वील नॉट गो दैट मच डिटेल्स डोंट वरी दैट मच इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर योर एनसीआर टी और द नीट दैट मच इज ओके डोंट वरी वील नॉट गो मच बियॉन्ड बट वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट मे बी समटाइम्स दे मे आस्क यू दैट कैन यू सी द फर्स्ट पेयर ऑफ मैगजिले एज सम यू नो द वन पैल्प कमिंग आउट दिस इज कॉल्ड मैगजिलरी पैल्प दिस इज कॉल्ड एज मैगजिलरी पैल्प सो इफ द क्वेश्चन कम्स टू यू हाउ मच सेगमेंटेड इज द फर्स्ट पेयर ऑफ मैगजिलरी पैल्प फर्स्ट पेयर ऑफ मैगजरी पैल्प हाउ मेनी सेगमेंट्स आर देयर तो यू हैव टू आंसर इट इज फाइव सेगमेंटेड यू कैन सी हियर वन सेगमेंट दिस इज वन दिस इज टू दिस इज थ्री दिस इज फोर एंड दिस इज द फिफ्थ वन सो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव टोटल फाइव सेगमेंटेड तो फर्स्ट पेयर ऑफ मैगजरी हैज फाइव सेगमेंटेड पैल्प but the, if the question comes second pair of maxillae it has three segmented pal can you see one two and three here so three segmented pal here it is three segmented pal is it okay these palps are used for you know you they will try to take the food from that so these palps will help them to take the food and all so this was a three segmented pal and this was a Five segmented palp. Is it okay with everyone? Hope you got it. Easy. Don't worry. Don't go into too much depth. At least few important points you should know. Okay. So let's talk about the thorax region now. Let's talk about the thorax region. Now, if you talk about the thorax region, this is the head of the cockroach. this is the thorax now you see this is thorax region so thorax has three parts okay thorax has three parts one is the prothorax which i should draw a little bit bigger in size okay so this is the thorax prothorax now prothorax is bit larger so this prothorax where you can see pronotum is written pronotum is the sclerite here you can see pronotum is written pronotum means the sclerite covering the prothorax so this is the prothorax pro thorax covered by covered by pronotum okay so this is the prothorax covered by pronotum pronotum is what the largest sclerite on the body this is the sclerite this is the sclerite which kind of sclerite it is tergite that means it is present on the dorsal side so when they are present on the dorsal side they are called as tergum or the tergites okay let's see now so this was a prothorax this was a mesothorax this was a prothorax mesothorax and this is metathorax so this is complete the complete thorax here remember one thing from these thoracic region from this thoracic region the one pair of one pair of leg is going to come from that okay so it is coxa trochanter okay tibia femur and all and ultimately you have the so one pair of leg from this structure that is prothorax one pair of leg coming from the mesothorax and one pair of leg will come from the metathorax hope you are getting my point okay so you can say three pairs of legs each coming from prothorax meso and meta one pair of leg is coming one will also come here i am not drawing this side now let's see next is your abdomen as i told you abdomen is appendage less it will not have any appendage in insects so here appendage has the sorry the segments are present here there is no appendage the segments will be present here so externally 
on the dorsal side you can see around 10 you know tergites 10 tergites you can see on that so you understood my point one very important point here let's see the one pair of wing will come from the mesothorax so mesothorax will give out one pair of wing and even one pair of wing is going to come from the one pair of wing is coming from the metathorax you can see here one pair of wing is coming from the metathorax so there are two types of wings one is the mesothoracic wing and other is your metathoracic wing okay so this mesothoracic wing and this is metathoracic wing let's let's talk about these two now this is the metathoracic wing metathoracic wing now this metathoracic wing is thin and membranous thin and membranous it is going to help in flight very important this is going to help in flight hope you are getting my point so this metathoracic wing is going to help in flight whereas the mesothoracic wing mesothoracic wing it is also called as tagmina or it is also called as elytra this is not going to help in flight it is not going to help in flight so mesothoracic wing is also called as tagmina or elytra that is not going to help in flight okay and this is the i you can see i compound i here okay and this is the antenna coming out of the head region and this is the abdomen region which we'll talk about later also in detail okay so this was basics of your thoracic region of cockroach even you can see this diagram also here you can see this diagram from ncrt so each and every question is going to come from that so this is the filiform antennae here is your compound i this is the head region this is the tagmina can you see this is the tagmina given here so tagmina is your mesothoracic wing hind wing that is metathoracic wing so hind wing is thin and membranous whereas the metathoracic wing that is tagmina is opaque opaque and leathery so this is your mesothoracic wing hope you understood this very well so mesothoracic wing is opaque and leathery do not help in flight these do not help in flight please remember very important do not help in flight is it okay did you get it and the one which is going to help in flight is hind wing metathoracic wing which is thin and membranous so metathoracic wing is going to help in flight rest part you see this is the mesothorax and leg is coming from each thoracic region can you see they are prothoracic leg mesothoracic leg and metathoracic leg that means each thoracic region is giving rise to the leg so three pairs of legs you can see and here you can see one very important thing that is anal sarcae anal sarcae is present in both sexes whether it is male or female on the 10th thargum you will find the anal sarcae which is sensitive to vibrations even sound also okay so let's move further now with the next appendage thoracic appendage that is your leg leg of the cockroach now you have to tell me the names of a b c d and e these are the the parts of the leg of cockroach so let us talk about all these a the largest largest part of the leg of cockroach is the coxa please write down here largest i am not talking about longest i am talking about largest next comes your 
B that is trochanter here. B part is your trochanter. You can see that is very small. So you can say smallest here. Smallest. Next comes the C part. Can you see this is very strong? Okay, this is a very strong part here. C is your femur. So now you can understand why studying these cockroaches can be so beneficial. So much of power they have in the legs because they have or took origin from some type of you know insects which would, would have jumped also and then they could have gone for a flight so this is something very strong they have very strong you know these these parts are very strong in them and the first time the striated muscles also took origin in arthropods so these are very important to study femur is the strongest you can say is the strongest part of the leg of the cockroach next comes the d part that is your longest part you can see that is the tibia longest part is the tibia is it okay and e is your tarsus part e is the tarsus okay so if you want to learn this you can learn by a mnemonic that is catch the flight to anything you can say it's tokyo or tuticon anything okay tamil nadu so catch the flight to tokyo or tamil nadu is it okay so this was the you know structure which is the appendage that is leg of cockroach let's continue with the abdomen region now so let's talk about the abdomen abdomen in male and female in males and females okay in both sexes it is having 10 segments how many segments they have in the appendage that they have in the abdomen that is 10 segments whether it is male or female both have 10 segments in them and you can see also this is the male and this is female externally you can see that this is dorsal side on the dorsal side you can see 10 up segments visible on the dorsal side here also and 10 segments visible in female also yes there is some little bit difference you can see here you can see some gynovalvular plates there you can't see gynovalvular plates in future in and further cases but you can see there are 10 you know segments you can easily see yes you can differentiate this is the male because it has anal style which is not present in female that is different thing but you can see the 10 segments in them but if you come ventral side now in the ventral side if you see if you just turn the cockroach okay ventral side if you see you will be only able to see externally seven segments in females and nine segments externally visible in males so please remember on the ventral side you will be able to see nine segments and in the case of the female you will be able to see externally seven so here i am talking about which cockroach also i should mention it this is periplanata americana that is why the ncrt is very smart they will not say about much details like this so if they tell something they will be telling you about the species name also so this we are talking about periplanata americana is it okay so abdomen in both male and female has 10 segments is it clear now so let's talk about anal style so anal style is present in males in males on which segments you can see that is present on ninth oblique 10th segment but in ncrt it's right ninth segment so you can go for ninth segment only okay let's talk about the anal sarcas anal sarcai is present on anal sarcai is present on the 10th segment it is present on the 10th segment is it okay hope you understood the abdomen little bit much more details also we'll study in the abdomen that is the genital pouch so here you see the female genital pouch first this is the female genital pouch female genital pouch 
is made up of seventh, eighth, and ninth terna. These are all terna. These are all sterna, which are making the brood pouch or the genital pouch. So this genital pouch is made up of seventh, eighth, and ninth. In which seventh is board shaped sternum. Seventh is largest and board shaped sternum. Eighth and ninth are being covered by it, and this is forming a structure called brood pouch. Brood pouch of brood pouch of female cockroach contains. Brood pouch of female cockroach will contain what structures it is going to contain. Let's see, spermathecal pores. It is going to contain spermathecal pores. The spermathecal pores you can see here. The spermatheca is there, which is having the pores here only. Okay. Even it will have the opening of openings of collateral glands. Collateral glands. One more thing you see that will also have the opening of what female genital pore. So opening of female genital pore also will be here only. It is clear with you. You can see the female genital pore, the opening of the spermatheca, and the collateral gland. You can see the collateral gland opening also here. So this is a structure called genital pouch. Is it okay? In the same way, there is a genital pouch in males also, but they are not formed only of sterna here. This is formed of three sterna, that is seventh, eighth, and a ninth sterna. But in case of male, the genital pouch is made up of ninth and tenth targa, ninth and tenth targa, and ninth sterna. These all fuse to form what? Male brood pouch. Male genital pouch is formed by 9th and 10th targa and it is ventrally. Ventral is ventral is sterna always. So you have a sterna on the ventral side. Targa is on the dorsal side. Is it clear with you? Is it now clear? So let's talk about what it will contain. So male genital pouch male genital pouch contains now very important here the first and foremost thing you should remember this contains gynapophyses what are gynapophyses gynapophyses are the structures which are going to help it in copulation that's going to open the female genital uh, apertures for copulation so that is male genit uh, genital genital you know structures which are going to help them in copulation so these are gonapophyses so male gonapophyses openings means structures will be present in the genital pouch next you see it will also have the opening of the male genital pore can you see here the male genital pore is going to open here okay and one very important structure you see this is the rectum which is leading to anus here. So, the dorsal anus, the opening of the dorsal anus will be present in the genital pouch. Please remember, opening of, opening of the anus on the dorsal side. Can you see that? So, this is the structure which we are talking about as genital pouch. So genital pouch of male also we talked about and the female also we have talked remember very important the questions can come from these things only they will easily ask you these questions okay okay one question i may ask you in the abdomen only i'll ask you one question okay so let me ask you one question in the abdomen where are where are pink gland present stink glands present because when you hold a cockroach 
or any other insect also but in cockroach we are specifically talking about now if you hold that uh, if you just accidentally come across you know in your uh, means uh, when you touch with your fingers or you know body part so it may produce some noxious smell so in cockroach it comes from a gland called stink gland so can you tell me where is the stink gland present stink gland in cockroaches are present on these are present on fifth and sixth abdominal tarja these are present on the fifth and sixth abdominal tarjites or tarja please remember okay there are many other things also you can learn so many things there's so much of uh, you know information on cockroaches i think they are more than celebrity they have been studied okay anyway let's talk about the difference between the male and female cockroach so now tell me which will be wider which will have a wider abdomen and which will have a narrower abdomen so as you can see the females will have broad abdomen as compared to males but size of female cockroach will be less than the male so male is larger in size but they have narrow abdomen but females are smaller in size but still they have broad abdomen because they are the child bearers usually na so they have to keep those eggs and all they have ovipositor also so that is why they will have broader abdomen now anal style will be present in males males will have anal style you can see here anal style is on the ninth segment here it is coming from the ninth so this will be present in males only but it is absent in females okay females will not have anal style they will have anal sarcus only which is coming from the ninth oblique tenth anal sarca is common in both okay next point you see wings are much going much beyond the tip of the abdomen in case of periplanata americana not in all cockroaches again but wings are do not extend beyond the tip of abdomen in periplanata americana is it okay everyone you got this point clear now this is very important difference between male and female let's talk about further about the anatomy and the physiology of cockroach so we will talk now about the very important you know physiology uh, system that is digestive system now so digestive system if you talk about your cockroach it has three major divisions the alimentary canal of the cockroach will have three major divisions as you also have it that is the foregut midgut and hindgut foregut is also called as stomodeum midgut is also called mesentron and hindgut is also called proctodeum so one by one let's talk about them this is the foregut till here till gizzard you can see is a foregut here can you see this is the foregut and from the region of this yellow region you can see this complete yellow region that is ileum colon and rectum this all these structures make your midgut okay so midgut is here you can see midgut is sorry uh, ileum colon and rectum will go into the hindgut ileum colon and rectum will go in the hindgut okay here you see ileum colon and rectum will go in the hindgut region midgut will contain this mesentron this is the mesentron or the midgut this is the mid gut okay we'll talk one by one don't worry so let's talk about the foregut first foregut is also called as stomodeum one very important point it is ectodermal in origin please remember it is ectodermal in origin it is internally lined by cuticle internally 
लाइंड बाय लाइंड बाय क्यूटिकल so hope you understand what i am saying this is internally lined by the cuticle so it it is requiring too much of you know maybe the food is coming that is hard little bit and that has to be uh, prevented the internal structure has to be prevented so it is internally lined by the cuticle now it is starts with pharynx you can see mouth and then pharynx and then it comes esophagus crop and then gizzard so you can see pharynx esophagus crop and gizzard so crop is the region which is a temporary storage which is for temporary storage of food and here you see gizzard gizzard is for the crushing this is meant for crushing it has has six cuticular teeth it has six cuticular teeth chitinous teeth you can say okay or chitinous teeth it has so those teeth are going to crush the food so gizzard is also called as proventriculus the gizzard is also called as proventriculus okay so gizzard is having six internal chitinous teeth or cuticular teeth to crush the food is it okay it is also going to secrete the peritrophic membrane Where it goes, it's going to uh, end that region. It is going to start secretion. Some cells are there which will be starting the secretion of peritrophic membrane also. So we'll talk about that also. Don't worry. So this is what we talked about in foregut. Very important structure. You see, at the junction of foregut and midgut, at the junction of foregut and midgut, you find some six, you know, hepatic CK coming out. So hepatic CK is found at the junction of four gut and mid gut so let's talk about here mid gut that is mesenteron so hepatic ck hepatic ck are found at the junction of junction of four gut and mid gut these are six in number six in number secrete digestive juices they secrete digestive juices please remember very important hepatic ck is like your liver okay so they secrete what digestive juices midgut midgut is a mesentron it is endodermal in origin please write down endodermal in origin so this is endodermal in origin it is not lined by cuticle internally okay not lined by cuticle it is the structure which is not having cuticle so how it is going to prevent itself as the food is going to come from the gizzard as it enters into the mesentron or the midgut secretion of peritrophic membrane over the food starts happening as a wrapping the peritrophic membrane will start covering the food so write down that point peritrophic peritrophic membrane covers the food covers the food as it enters midgut please write down this important point okay now question comes from where does the peritrophic membrane is secreted just now i told you gizzard is the one which secretes peritrophic membrane so peritrophic membrane is secreted by gizzard gizzard secretes the peritrophic membrane can you see that is it clear with you so here this midgut can also be called as ventriculus because just before that was gizzard which was called called as proventriculus so this midgut can also be called as ventriculus okay let's talk about the hindgut now hindgut is mainly for absorption of water and all so it has three parts has three parts here has 
those three parts first one is your helium next is your colon and third one is your rectum okay so helium colon and rectum one very important point here at the junction of mid gut and hind gut at the junction of junction of mid gut and hind gut what is present can you tell me what is present malfeasian tubules are present 100 to 150 malfeasian tubules are present please remember this very important now question is what is the function of malpigian tubules malpigian tubules are involved in excretion so why we are studying about here because whatever the excretory material malpigian tubules will produce that is going to be dumped into the hind gut only that's going to be dumped in that region that is why we are studying this structure understood very well let's continue further now so this was all about the digestive system now we'll be talking about the circulatory system so blood vascular system of cockroach is open type that means blood vessels are present but they are poorly developed blood vessels are poorly developed and they open into some spaces called hemocele these spaces are called sinuses so these spaces called sinuses are the one where the blood is going to come and dump in that region okay so let's talk about more details they have 13 chambered heart 13 chambered heart is present in cockroach neurogenic heart heart of cockroach is neurogenic heart what do you mean by neurogenic heart your heart is myogenic because your heart takes the action from the muscles sa node is a specialized muscle but here the signal comes from the nervous system so that is why it is called as neurogenic heart is it okay now let's see it has 12 pairs of ailery muscles 12 pairs of ailery muscles which you know control the contraction and relaxation of the heart you can see here these are the ailery muscles can you see here these are ailery muscles okay these are the chambers of heart these chambers of heart you can see so many chambers of heart were there how many were there that is 13 chambers 13 chambered heart 13 chambers are there in that and this is the anterior aorta which is going to dump into the anterior aorta is going to dump in the head sinus the blood is going to come into head sinus and then flow into the perineural sinus that also we'll talk about in a other cross section let's see this one this will make you understand the circulatory system better this has been taken as a what you know section horizontal section here and you see this blood which is coming from this region blood is always flowing from posterior to anterior please write down this point is very important blood flows from blood in cockroach heart flows from flows posterior to anterior very few points are there which are we are telling you this is not extra point very few few points because if the question comes little bit twisted you can do it we are not going to go into too much details don't worry that is not required so blood in cockroach cockroach's heart is flowing from what posterior to anterior please remember this it is flowing, flowing from posterior to anterior because when the ailery muscles are going to relax that that's going to you know the dorsal diaphragm is going to come up and that will cause a pressure on that so all the blood from here also is going to enter into the ostia so there are some small small openings called ostia through which the blood will enter in that and will be taken ahead in the head sinus this is the head sinus here this is the head sinus region where you have the anterior aorta coming let's see now the so blood of cockroach is colorless blood is colorless blood 
कलरलेस हेयर वाई बिकॉज इट हैज नो रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट नो रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट इन ब्लड ऑफ कॉक्रोच प्लीज रिमेंबर वेरी वेल दैट इज कॉल्ड हीमोलिम वॉट डज इट कंटेन इट कंटेन्स कलरलेस प्लाज्मा एंड हीमोसाइट्स हीमोसाइट्स आर लाइक डब्ल्यू बी सीज लाइक डब्ल्यू बी सीज देर सेल्स आर देर कॉल्ड हीमोसाइट्स हीमोसाइट्स आर लाइक डब्ल्यू बी सी एंड देर इज अ कलरलेस प्लाज्मा बिकॉज देर इज नो रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट नो रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट इन द ब्लड ऑफ कॉकरोच सो हैव यू ऑब्जर्व वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हेयर सो द टू डायफ्राम्स आर देयर इन दिस वन इज डॉर्सल डायफ्राम एंड अदर इज योर दिस इज द डॉर्सल डायफ्राम कैन यू सी दिस इज द डायफ्राम हेयर सो दिस इज द डॉर्सल डायफ्राम एंड दिस इज द वेंट्रल डायफ्राम कैन यू सी दिस इज द वेंट्रल डायफ्राम now why we are talking about this let's see when the blood has gone from the posterior to anterior it has reached in the head sinus so why it is not coming in the periviscular sinus now from where from this place it should go into the periviscular sinus okay which is the area where the all the visceral organs are there it is surrounded it is bathed by the hemolymph so why it is not coming because of the reason that is esophagus is there and esophagus is causing a problem in the entry of that so what happens the blood comes all blood will come into the perivisceral sinus now so when the all blood comes into perivisceral sinus uh, perineural sinus now sorry perineural sinus all the blood will come so when the perineural sinus the blood comes here the contraction of the body muscles now because it has some pores you can see these diaphragms are porous you can see here these diaphragms are perforated one is a dorsal diaphragm one is a ventral diaphragm these diaphragms are perforated they have small small openings from where what happens now here when the contraction of the body muscles will happen abdominal muscles blood is going to move from here to this part blood is going to move from the perineural sinus to perivisceral sinus and from perivisceral sinus it is going to move into the pericardial sinus okay now you understand very important point ailery muscles are going to control this systole and diastole how they are going to control it first you the very important point that ailery muscles if you see the pointed end pointed end of the ailery muscles is towards the tergum okay pointed ends of the ailery muscle is always towards the targum region targum region the pointed end pointed end of ailery muscles hope you understood this point so what is going to do now so when the ailery muscle are going to contract so when the ailery muscle will contract so the diaphragm is going to go down okay when the ailery muscles will contract the diaphragm will go down but when the ailery muscles are relaxing so when it relaxes the diaphragm is going to come up so when the diaphragm is coming up during relaxation what will happen the pressure will develop here and whatever blood has collected in that region it is going to enter into the ostia it is going to enter into the ostia like this you see here these are ostia here na these are the ostia here you can see here these are the ostia so what is happening here when the you know openings these these are openings here you can see these are openings so blood is here now blood is going to come from this region okay and there's a valve also which will prevent the back back flow there's a valve also here so there's a valve which will prevent the back flow the flow will come from what posterior to anterior only so this is the valve here and these are the these are the ostia one is the ostium the both are the ostia so these ostia are going to allow those blood to move in a particular direction it is going to move in this direction only it is not going to move back it is going from posterior to anterior again it is coming here again it will come go into the perineural sinus in the perineural sinus 
again the body muscles abdominal muscles will contract so the blood is going to go a little bit in the perivisceral sinus okay so perivisceral sinus the blood has gone so once this relaxation relaxation of the muscles allergy muscles will happen the whatever the blood has reached that place that becomes you know volume now the pressure has increased in that part and the whatever blood has collected it will go into the ostium through the ostium it will enter into the heart and move further is it clear with you the physiology should be very clear in this okay so this was all about your circulatory system of the cockroach now let's talk about the respiratory system of the cockroach now now if i talk about the respiratory system the blood circulatory system was open type respiratory system requires very small small openings through which the air should enter each and every tissue so therefore that they have a special you know structures called spiracles so they have 10 pairs of spiracles how many pairs of spiracles 10 pairs of spiracles present on which side lateral side that means on the region of pleuron or pleurites so lateral sides you have 10 pairs of spiracles spiracles they are two pairs two pairs on the thorax thorax region and eight pairs sorry eight pairs on the abdomen region okay very important point please remember so two pairs on the thorax and eight pairs on the abdominal region now what these tubes do through these tubes the air is going to enter inside move into those tubes here you can see the longitudinal trunk is there there's a lateral longitudinal tracheal trunk the air is moving inside in this trunks and then it has to move inside the tracheoles so let us discuss the tracheoles also let's discuss all those points now now let's see so this is the opening called as spiracle okay this is the opening called as spiracle and this is the structure called your pleuron okay so here you see this is the structure which is leading to uh atrium this is the structure where the i uh, just after entering there's a space that is space is called as atrium then there's a valve here through the valve the air is going to be controlled how much is going to enter inside okay and then you have the trachea here which has a inner you have the t shaped circular linings also in that this has also got small 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 hairs also okay this is called intima layer is there inside intima layer intima or tinidia layer don't worry about learning all these things okay don't worry and here you see there's some circular muscle this is a sphincter muscle here this is called sphincter muscle this is the sphincter muscle so sphincter muscles are what usually circular okay so these sphincter muscles are going to control the entry of the air inside and the air is going to come inside now enter into the tracheoles here can you see the tracheoles okay so this air is going to come into the tracheoles now and here is your tissue region this is a tissue where it has to be supplied so this is a tracheal cells and through the tracheal cells it's going to come to the tissues let's see here also you can see here this is a trachea trachea is leading to tracheal cells and these tracheal cells afterwards you can these are tracheals are leading to the tissues here okay so exchange will take place in the tracheal cells here and the ultimately the delivery has to happen to tissues okay so these are the tracheolar ends these are the tracheolar ends clear so this was the structure about the regulation of respiration these have circular muscles which will control the entry of them entry of the air inside is it okay for example if you put that cockroach in the soapy water that is why they die because the you know air is not able to enter inside the 
ट्रेक स्पायरिकल्स गॉर इट हेयर क्लियर नेक्स्ट इज योर एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम नाउ इन एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम इट्स वेरी इजी हेयर यू सी दे हैव मालफीजन ट्रिब्यूल्स तो द एक्सक्रीटरी ऑर्गन इन द कॉकरोच इज मालपीगियन ट्रिब्यूल्स हाउ मेनी आर देयर हंड्रेड टू वन फिफ्टी इन नंबर वॉट दीज मालपीगियन ट्रिब्यूल्स डू वेयर दे आर प्रेजेंट दे आर प्रेजेंट एट द जंक्शन ऑफ मिड गट एंड हाइंड गट दे आर प्रेजेंट जंक्शन ऑफ मिड गट एंड हाइंड गट सो यू कैन सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग दीज आर ब्लाइंड एंडेड ट्यूब्स दीज आर ब्लाइंड एंडेड ट्यूब्स थ्रू विच द नाइट्रोजनस वेस इज एंट्रिंग इन साइट एंड कमिंग इन टू द द हाइंड गट रीजन फ्रॉम द मिड गट रीजन हाइंड गट रीजन दट गोइंग टू एंटर इन द हाइंड गट रीजन नाउ ओके हेयर वॉट हैपन्स इज लाइक इन योर किडनीज ऑल द स्टफ which comes in this uh, you know kidney nephrons that doesn't go as urine most of them is reabsorbed also here also reabsorption of important water ions and valuable organic molecules will take place so further what is hap- what is happening formation of uric acid is happening here you see uric acid is going to form here but is still some important ions are going to be reabsorbed from here is it okay so this is very important to understand what is the excretory product of the cockroach that is uric acid is the excretory product how is this uric acid formed uric acid is formed because from the hemocyl there is a hemocyl here okay hemocyl is there here which has those hemolymph and all from there the nitrogenous waste are coming in the form of potassium urate and all so those potassium urate and all they will convert into uric uric acid and whatever rest useful things are there they will be reabsorbed from here okay so this is not very complex it's easy to understand okay so this is also now one very important point here excretory organ of the cockroach is mainly malpigian tubules but is still they have some other you know structures also for excretion like they have fat bodies they have nephrocytes which are near the heart and they have some uricose glands exclusively in males so if you talk about uricose glands they are exclusively in males only these are found only in males only and they help in excretion whereas fat bodies and nephrocytes can be found in females also so they also help in what excretion is it okay let's continue further with the nervous system now so nervous system we will start now nervous system of cockroach consists of total 9 ganglia here total 9 ganglia 3 ganglia in the thorax and 6 ganglia in the abdomen so total 9 ganglia very important it has double ventral nerve cord also here you see one very important structure here this is the body of the cockroach here and here is the nervous system of that so here you see there is a the esophagus there is the pharynx and esophagus here so this is the esophagus going here in the esophageal region there is a the sub esophageal ganglia here here you see there is a sub supra esophageal here and here the sub esophageal here so there is a supra esophageal ganglion which is considered as the brain so supra esophageal ganglion is considered as a brain of cockroach this is considered as a brain of cockroach and here is the sub esophageal ganglion please remember this is a sub esophageal ganglion what happens here you see there is a connective which connects here there is a connective by neurons are connecting and this connection leads to a very important structure here you see there is a double ventral cord going here so in the thorax region you have the three ganglia bigger ones so these are thoracic ganglia and rest is the abdominal ganglia so in the segments prop 
particular segments you have the six six ganglia here okay six ganglia are here so these are the abdominal ganglia abdominal ganglia are the six ones and these three the major three ones these are the thoracic ganglia thoracic ganglia and that is why what happens is when you cut the head of the cockroach suppose you cut the head of the cockroach here if you cut the head of the cockroach so this head of the cockroach when it is cut is still the cockroach is surviving the cockroach will survive if the head is cut it will survive for one week but the biggest problem happens because the sub esophageal ganglia is not motor in function this is the ganglia which is what motor in function motor activities go by this ganglion but the brain is totally sensory here the brain is sensory only it just gives you know branches of nerves to the antennae and mouth parts that is the only thing it will do so what happens when you cut it it will not be able to eat food so when it is not able to eat food that is going to die in other way you can see the structure here also in other other side you can see this structure this is the prothoracic ganglion this is a mesothoracic ganglion this is the metathoracic so these three are what thoracic ganglia and rest you can see the abdominal ganglia here so these are the abdominal ganglia and the last abdominal ganglia that is sixth is a bigger in size but the fifth segment will not have the ganglia also okay so this is the other form way in another way you can see the structure here of the nervous system and it is in other, the longitudinal way you can see here okay so let's uh, talk about the sense organs now a very important that is compound eyes so each compound eye of cockroach each compound eye of cockroach consists of each compound eye of cockroach contains 2000 omatidia 2000 omatidia now listen very important point here so in this case one omatidia has been taken out and one omatidia if you see this is the diopteric region this part is called as diopteric region here this part is the diopteric region and this part is the receptive region now let's see what happens there is a kind of vision in cockroach called mosaic vision even in spite of having even in spite of being nocturnal cockroach is cockroach is nocturnal but whereas the mosaic vision is usually found in diurnal insects but is still cockroach has still has mosaic vision how is it possible let's see it has mosaic vision due to a reason because this is the cornea gen cells or the lens these lens these cone cells four cone cells are surrounding this crystalline cone can you see this is the crystalline cone so when light falls on this when light falls on this structure it can go to other parts also but here there is a pigment iris pigment sheath which covers this so the light which is coming here the light which is coming here it is not going into other regions other omatidia and moreover in the lower part also you can see there is a rhabdome which is surrounded by the retinal pigment sheath so retinal pigment sheath covers those seven cells you can see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven retinal cells seven retinular cells are covered so what happens light which is coming it is not going into the adjacent omatidia because of which what happens is each individual image will be formed each omatidia will form a individual image and those image will be collected and you know processed by the brain this is only going through the nerve fibers can you see it is not going into the other omatidia so there is no superimposition of the images so that is why it is 
the mosaic vision it is not super imposition image it is mosaic vision it is individual images will be formed hope you understood we are not going to too much details of this because that much is only required for your exam okay so let's talk about the reproductive system now so this is the male <coughs> reproductive structure you can see here it consists of testis seminal vesicles and accessory glands and the external genitalia also so let's see here the testis which is formed in fourth fifth and sixth segment fourth fifth sixth segment you can find the testis this is leading to the to the vas deferens okay vas deferens is a thin tube which is leading into what this is leading into a structure called mushroom gland and ultimately the seminal vesicle and will lead to ejaculatory duct so let's see the sperm are formed in the testis they go into the vas deferens then they enter into the seminal vesicle okay to the mushroom gland and then they will enter into the ejaculatory duct and open to the male genital pore on the ventral fallopian so ventral fallopian will have the male genital pore is it okay this is the phallic gland you can see here phallic gland is also called as conglobate gland phallic gland is also called conglobate gland which secretes the outer layer of it secretes the outer layer of spermatophore outer layer of spermato pore what is a spermatophore when the sperms are produced they are glued together here when they are glued together and they form a spermatophore in the form of a spermatophore only they will be transferred to the female okay now let's see the other structures also ejaculatory duct here so ejaculatory duct is going to secrete the middle layer of the spermatophore here you see ejaculatory duct so ejaculatory duct is going to secrete middle layer of the spermatophore let's see now we'll talk about that also in detail now this small tubules and long tubules also you can see so these small tubules and long tubules are a part of the mushroom gland this is the part of mushroom gland okay so this they form a structure called mushroom gland this is called utricular brevis and utricular uh, longitudinal so let us talk about these also and moreover these are the gonapophyses left fallopian titillator pseudo penis these all are what the external genitalia which help in the copulation process so these are called as fallopians you can see here fallopians these are gonapophyses so these are the fallopians which will be talking about in detail also so let's talk about them in detail so these are the fallopians or the gonapophyses this one is your largest largest fallopian so as you see the largest fallopian that means it is the left one so this is the left fallopian so left fallopian is the largest fallopian please write down left fallopian is left fallopian is the largest okay here you see this one is the one in which you can see the gonopore so wherever you see gonopore that means it will be a ventral fallopian ventral fallopian will have the male gonopore please remember okay and this will be the right fallopian right fallopian so these fallopians or the gonapophyses help in what help in copulation is it okay now clear to you let's move towards the female reproductive system now so in female reproductive system if you see the there are two major ovarioles can you see the ovaries have the ovarioles in that so these ovaries the leading into the they have eight ovarioles here you can see eight ovarioles 
from each ova areoles you can see the different stages of development the ova will be there and these ova are going to come here okay and here there is a structure called as sperma theca so sperma theca is a paired structure in the sixth segment so here you see now so this is second third fourth fifth sixth so in the ovaries are present in which segment they will ask you it is 2 to 6 you can see so in the sixth segment you can little bit go down here in the sixth segment you see in the sixth segment you have the sperma theca okay so sixth segment you have the sperma theca so this is the sixth segment for example mushroom gland if they ask you which segment then you can say sixth oblique seventh okay so mushroom gland if they ask you it is sixth oblique seventh okay this is sixth oblique seventh is the mushroom gland now let's see so in this case what happens is this is the oviduct here these two ovaries have joined here form oviduct it is also called as vagina here okay now you see here here there is a structure coming out that is called as the brood pouch or the genital pouch which is characterized by a chamber here okay genital chamber and there is a vestibulum and inside you can find the gonapophyses female gonapophyses now what happens you see here so eight ovarios were here so eight ovarios means eight ova are going to come from this region from this region also when they are coming in this region what happens the sperma theca this is a sperma theca here okay which has a stored what these is sperma theca has a stored so much of so much of the sperms now these sperma theca will be releasing what the sperms and these ova are also released so fertilization will take place in this region so fertilization when it takes place the fertilized eggs now are going to be covered are going to be given some secretion from the collateral gland so this is the collateral gland here so this collateral gland is going to secrete the fluid and it is going to cover them and oo theca are going to come out so how many oo theca will come out 9 to 10 oo theca are going to come out 9 to 10 oo theca will come out and each oo theca will contain 14 to 16 eggs each oo theca contains 14 to 16 eggs here okay so let's see here also you can see this is the ovary region this is the oviduct common oviduct of vagina is here okay and here you can see the collateral glands the left collateral gland is larger as compared to the right one here is the genital chamber and this is the vestibulum so here the fertilization happens and oo theca are coming out so when the oo theca will come out each oo theca will have 14 to 16 fertilized eggs how many oo theca are produced if they ask you it is 9 to 10 oo theca are produced okay so this was bit easy for you now comes the development so which type of development will be there in that okay it's given also here you see each oo theca contains 14 to 16 eggs so you can see one oo theca this is a oo theca so each oo theca contains 14 to 16 eggs so if you see that inside you may find eight eggs this side and eight eggs this side okay so there are 14 to 16 fertilized eggs in this fertilized eggs and this is one oo theca this is one oo theca now question is oo theca is secreted by the oo theca membranes are secreted by collateral glands so membrane of oo theca or the oo theca secreted by secreted by collateral glands hope you got it secreted by collateral glands got it let's talk about the development now development in the cockroach is sporometabolous sporometabolous means gradual metamorphosis what do you mean by gradual metamorphosis what do you mean by gradual metamorphosis that means the development which takes place 
from the egg to the nymph and then comes the adult or the imago now this nymph is just similar to adult only the fact is they will not have the wings they have wing pads they have wing pads but no wings adult only has wings it has wings only okay the adult only has wings the nymph will not have wings even this nymph is going to convert into adult okay for a, after a long time and that will be a condition called as sporometabolus that will take around 13 molds 13 molds are going to take place when it forms the adult okay so here it is written also 13 times molting occurs so last stage also the next to last nymphal stage has wing pads still the adult only will have the wings not the the nymph no way the nymph will have the the wings okay so you understood my point the division the metamorphosis in cockroaches sporometabolus that is called gradual metamorphosis the next to last nymphal stage will have wing pads it is not going to have wings wings will be only found in what adult how many times molting takes place 13 time molts takes place in the life cycle of cockroach okay so now we'll discuss some questions on the the previous year questions so which of the following characteristics is incorrect with respect to cockroach let's see now you can do it or not which of the following is incorrect 10th abdominal segment in both sexes bears a pair of inner cerci so this was asked in neat 2021 so first is obviously correct because Tenth abdominal segment in both sexes will bear a pair of anal cerci. That is absolutely correct. But they are asking what? They are asking incorrect here. A ring of gastric CK is present at the junction of mid gut and the hind gut. Sorry, this should be fore gut and mid gut. It should be fore gut and mid gut. What do you say? Correct. So this is the answer. You got the incorrect answer. next question you see which of the following is statements is incorrect female cockroach possess 16 ovarios in the ovaries again he is asking about the incorrect so this is absolutely correct because eight ovarios in one ovary are coming from one ovary eight ovarios so there are two ovaries so 16 ovarios is correct cockroaches exhibit mosaic vision with less sensitivity and more resolution no this will have more sensitivity and less resolution so it should have less resolution and more sensitivity please write down more sensitivity and less resolution is present in the eye or the mosaic vision of the cockroach please do it fast okay that was asked in neat 2019 so let's see some practice questions also here So, which of the following correctly identifies the labeled organs in the diagram of digestive system of cockroach? So, hope you can see the P Q R here, P Q R S. So, you have to find out which is what is P Q R S here. So, I think you can easily see P is the crop there, correct? P is the crop. Uh, Q, you can see that's a gizzard. So, it's a crop and gizzard. R. you can easily identify r as something you know a structure called hepatic ck r is hepatic ck because here it is hepatic ck if it was here then it was malpigian tubules so r should be hepatic ck and s is here as malpigian tubules so we can go for answer as crop gizzard hepatic ck and malpigian tubules correct so we'll go for as d as the right answer is it okay easy for you now let's proceed further now next question which of the following is incorrect with reference to cockroach let's see you can do it or not malpigian tubules are present between mid gut and hind gut absolutely this is correct so again incorrect here for trying to find out 
sixth sternum is boat shape sorry this should be seventh sternum correct seventh sternum should be boat shaped in female so this is absolutely wrong here so you got the answer as very easy very easy answer okay let's move to the next question which of the following is statement with reference to cockroaches incorrect incorrect again again incorrect here it has 13 chamber tubular heart correct blood from sinuses enters heart through ostia obviously it is going to enter through the ostia only sac like a structure crop is present in the alimentary canal helps in grinding food no it doesn't have help in grinding grinding is by gizzard grind grinding is by gizzard g for grinding g for gizzard so this is gone this is incorrect let's see the next question here circulatory system of cockroaches shown in diagram identify the correct matching now this is a very good question i think let's try if you remember what we taught you what is labeled as one two and three very good question this is from ncrt so first one is the anterior aorta correct first one is the anterior aorta so you have two options again okay second is your muscles i think yeah muscles i think okay second is your muscles so you have aillery muscles so you got it easily now so if you got this one correct you got the answer correct so aillery muscles should be the right answer for second one clear let's move to the next question now which of the following is an incorrect match again incorrect match with reference to respective segments in the body of cockroach and the associated structures contained in these segments fourth to sixth abdominal segments a pair of testes in males yes four five six it is correct second to sixth abdominal segments a pair of ovaries that is also correct second to sixth is the pair of ovaries there in female in the cockroach sixth segment a pair of sperma thicke in males here you see sperma thicke can never be in males it should be in females sperma thicke they try to confuse you okay so sperma thicke always on in females so you got the incorrect easily okay let's move to the next question in cockroach which of the following gland forms uthical covering very important question so uthical covering is formed by which gland is it formed by phallic gland or the conglobate gland or the collateral gland or the utricular gland it's very easy you see this is found in males this is found in the other name of phallic gland is conglobate gland this is male only utricular gland also will be in the males in the mushroom gland so you have easy option left as collateral gland which is found in females only so uthika will be formed in what female okay let's see the next question find the correct statement from the following with respect to peri planeta americana so again now it's correct here so you read it nervous system located dorsally consists of segmental ganglia joined by a pair of longitudinal connectives okay wait for that vision in cockroach has more resolution and low sensitivity no this is wrong there are 16 very long malpighian tubules present at the junctions of mid gut and hind gut that is also wrong they are not 16 this is also wrong even this is also wrong you see nervous system located located dorsally he is saying which should be ventrally correct it should be ventral because in is a non chordate in non chordate the uh, nervous system is on the ventral side so last one is left that is plantule okay plantule help cockroach to move on a smooth surface so this should be the right answer then okay it should be plantule i think plantule clear to you easy let's move to the next question now find the incorrect statement with reference to reproductive system in cockroach on an average female periplanata produces 9 to 10 uthika each containing 14 to 16 eggs this is absolutely correct but he is asking about the incorrect one okay the development of 
पेरी प्लांट अमेरिकन आई स्पोरो मेटाबोलस मीनिंग देर इज डेवलपमेंट थ्रू निम्फल स्टेज दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट बिकॉज पॉरो मेटाबोलस मीन एग टू निम्फ एंड निम्फ टू एडल्ट The nymph grows by molting about eleven times. No, it is thirteen times. So here it is wrong statement. You can easily go for the incorrect one. Okay, so this is incorrect. Next question, you see, in female cockroach, genital pouch possess the genital pouch or the brood pouch possess collateral glands only, female gonopore only, female gonopore and collateral glands. or the female gonopore collateral glands and spermatical pores so this should be the correct answer these all are present in the female genital pouch okay the brood pouch contains all of these structures which of the following is correctly stated as happens in the common cockroach the food is grounded by mandibles only no malpighian tubules are excretory organs projecting out from the rectum no way it is coming from the junction of midgut and hindgut oxygen is transported by hemoglobin hemoglobin is not present so you have only one as the correct one that is conglobate gland secretes outermost layer of spermatophore this is correct answer this is also called phallic gland so phallic gland or the conglobate gland secretes the outermost layer of the spermatophore let's see the next question in cockroach the wings helpful in flight are so the wings which help in flight are the metathoracic wings correct these are the metathoracic wings now metathoracic wings are what opaque or leathery or membranous or darker and thicker so metathoracic wings are what thin and membranous so we'll go for this as the right answer okay thin and membranous remember they will ask questions like this only Which of portion of elementary canal of cockroach is not internally lined by cuticle? So internally, which is not lined by cuticle, so mid gut is usually not lined by cuticle. So mid gut is mesentron. Mesentron is the mid gut. Okay, so this should be the right answer for this. Let's talk about the next one. Allery muscles in Peri Planta Americana are. So allery muscles are what? They are rectangular in shape. No, they are triangular in shape. Okay, pointed end is attached to the sternum, and other end is attached to dorsal diaphragm. It should not be sternum; it should be tergum. I think. Let's wait. So the allery muscles are only twelve pairs. Yes, this is correct. triangular in shape and 13 pairs no 13 pairs so i think this is the only correct answer this should be tergum here this should be tergum okay this should be tergum here pointed end towards the tergum and other end is attached to the dorsal diaphragm which of the following is not found in the hemolymph of cockroach in the hemolymph in the hemolymph of cockroach you find the hemocytes yes plasma yes water yes but you won't find hemoglobin hemoglobin is not found in the blood of cockroach so that's wrong answer which of the following features is used to identify a male cockroach from a female cockroach four wings with darker tegmina or the presence of caudal styles or presence of a board shaped sternum on the ninth abdominal segment or the presence of anal cerci so it's very easy that anal styles anal styles are present on the male so you have to differentiate male from a female so it's easy question here presence of anal style will be there in males only correct in male cockroaches sperms are stored in which part of the reproductive system so in male cockroaches sperms will be stored in which part of the reproductive system so here you see it's very important male So in males it should be stored in seminal vesicles but in females it is stored in spermatica okay so here it should be seminal vesicles because it's male here okay let's see the next question now which of the following feature is not present in peri planta americana not present in exoskeleton is composed of n acetyl glucosamine that is correct 
मेटामेडिकली सेगमेंटेड बॉडी करेक्ट इस खाइजो सीलो में बॉडी कैविटी करेक्ट इन डिटर्मिनेट एंड रेडियल क्लीवेज ड्यूरिंग एम्ब्रियन डेवलपमेंट दैट इज अ फीचर ऑफ कॉर्डेट तो दिस इज फाउंड इन कॉर्डेट ओके सो दैट विल शुड बी इन कॉर्डेट सो दिस इज रॉन्ग इट इज नॉट फाउंड इन नॉट फाउंड इन कॉक्रोच बिकॉज इट्स अ नॉन कॉर्डेट Which external changes are visible after the last molt of a cockroach nymph? What changes will be visible after the last molt of a cockroach nymph? Do the mandibles become harder? Do the anal sulci develop, or both fore wings and hind wings will develop? Yes, the wings are going to develop. Wings are going to develop. okay now suppose question would have been dif bit different would i ask you one more question on this now at this last stage what i do is i will cut the corpora alata during the last in star in star if corpora alata corpora alata that is a structure you know that is a gland in the cockroach corpora alata is a endocrine gland in the cockroach so if corpora alata is cut what will happen what will happen is it going to form a you know it is going to uh, get a metamorphosis very fast or it will become a elong matlab continuous larvae it will be in the larval condition only just write down in the chat box now what will happen if the last during the last in star if the corpora alata is cut so what is going to happen in this case is it going to form it is going to have those wings coming out or it will be in the larval stages only so corpora alata is actually secreting the juvenile hormone corpora alata secretes juvenile hormone that is also called as neotenin so this hormone if it is there till the hormone is there it will not allow it to become a uh, adult it is not going to become adult but if you are cutting this what will happen now this is not going to maintain juvenility so immediately what will happen it is going to form the adult juvenility will not be maintained okay so we will discuss that also in the next you know questions types of eyes and vision in cockroach are respectively what types of eyes are present and what type of vision in cockroach is present is it a uh, simple eye and simple vision or is it a compound eye and superimposition image is it compound eyes and mosaic vision or is it compound eyes and simple vision very easy question it should be compound eyes and mosaic vision because the kind of vision in cockroach is mosaic types of eyes are compound eyes so we can go for this as right answer okay now type of metamorphosis in cockroaches we just discuss the type of metamorphosis in cockroach is gradual metamorphosis it is also called as porometabolous so it is also called as gradual metamorphosis okay gradual metamorphosis please write down this gradual metamorphosis now last question you see one or one or two questions are left now in the head of cockroach correctly match all four parts a b c and d you have to match all a b c d so a b c d easy question just now you studied this a is your maxillae correct a is your maxillae b is your labium so where you find the maxillae and labium simple okay and c is your mandible and d is your Labrum, can you see? So it's easy question if you see maxillae, labium, mandible, 
labrum. So they should be maxillae, they should be labium, mandible, and then comes your labrum. Okay. So let's see the next question now. Identify the correctly labeled part A in the elementary canal of cockroach. So you have to identify this A. What is this A? What is this A in this? Is it a salivary gland or what? It's very easy because others are written also here. So you can see it's a salivary reservoir. This is just for practice for you to understand how to study those NCR diagrams. Don't worry about if the other things are written also. This is just to make you understand how the questions will come. Okay. So this is the salivary reservoir. Pumps are stored in the labeled part X. Pumps are stored in the labeled part X of cockroach reproductive tract given below. Identify X. So what is X here? What is the X here? What is the X structure in which the sperms are being stored? The sperms are stored in males in seminal vesicle. So X should be what? Seminal vesicle. Correct? Hope you enjoyed this lecture. And now please practice these questions. These type of questions you keep practicing. You see those questions, uh, diagrams. Think about that some mismatches there and you have to match it. Okay. All the best. Keep learning. Thank you.